Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the Mormon Movie Reviews, where LDS movie lovers belong. My name is Dives, and today is September 19th, and this is episode 10. And we, today we're going to be reviewing Love is for the Birds. This was 1965. The running time on this film is 26 minutes, and obviously a spoiler alert. We're going to be watching the film together, and I'm going to be providing you with thoughtful and insightful commentary. The synopsis, Donna and Tom Bird experience marital difficulties loving each other that she never talks, and she complains that he never listens. They both have hopes and expectations resulting from their parents' examples to resolve. Now, some of the film background on this film is that it is produced by the BYU Motion Picture Studio. And another review of this particular film, uh, and it was done on The Beehive, the Love, Love is for the Birds, a BYU film recap that no one asked for. The following film was produced by Brigham Young University during the 1960s for general distribution to both church and non-church groups. Although the general principles are valid, the presentation does not represent all church areas of emphasis. So I believe that this is the first BYU film that I'm aware of. This is 1965 that contains this particular disclaimer. And this is a very amusing disclaimer. I mean, what is this trying to say? I think what this is trying to say is this is a pretty good church film. It is not authorized or commissioned by the Church, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was not under the auspices of the first presidency or the presiding bishopric or anything else. So it's trying to say, from my mind, this is a church film, but uh, don't take it too seriously. Now, it has good principles. And very exciting opening. Now, this is the first film that I've seen that uh, has this uh, Department of Family Life Education. I've not seen one before. I say love is for the birds. Okay, B-Y-R-D-S, uh, uh, unusual spelling for this, by the way. And here we have our two uh, stars of this particular uh, feature, which is Bryce Chamberlain as Tom Bird and Norma uh, Hall as Donna Bird. So love is for the birds, B-Y-R-D-S. And this film on VHS on, or on eBay. Uh, naturally, this film, uh, this review works if you have uh, seen this film before. But that is, uh, that is not required in order to have a, uh, an enjoyable experience. Coming out of the BYU Motion Picture Studio. Wetzel Whitaker, who has produced so many of the church films, is yet again the producer and the director. Now our opening here, this really looks like a Utah, Provo, Utah backyard scene. As he played a lot of weddings in these Provo, Utah backyards, and I know a Provo backyard when I see one. This looks like it was shot in the Tree Streets, which is in Provo. That's up on the east bench, just north of the letter Y. Hey, Helen, how about some breakfast? I'm starving. Hi. Whoa, <laughs> it's going to be that kind of film already here. I mean, it looks like we're getting ready for some kind of party. I guess the church cultural hall was already booked out. I mean, he's he's already yelling at his wife. This didn't take long. Something for yourself to eat, dear. I'm too busy this morning to worry about anyone's breakfast. I tried, but the refrigerator's full of posies. Oh, no, not there. Put it over by the pool. Looks like some kind of a, a reception here, a big party. That's better. Well, save some for the reception. Have you done your job out here this morning? You wouldn't be in this last minute, maybe. Some kind of a reception, maybe a wedding reception? Hard to say. This guy needs to get a clue. Hi, Daddy. Oh, hi. Okay, so here's our first view at Irma here, Dahan, playing the role of Donna. BD has only got a few to her name. Uh, she was mostly active in the 50s and 60s. I guess she's probably most well known for the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet there. Even find an egg, and it's all your fault. I'll get your breakfast, Daddy. Give me a break. Well, that'll be something on a day like this. I mean, this guy is borderline toxic. He's not making any friends. I mean, he is borderline toxic. And she says she needs to practice. I mean, we're reinforcing uh, 1960s gender, gender stereotype roles a bit early, are we? She says she's going to make him a breakfast, and how does he respond? Like this. your breakfast and he doesn't say oh hey thanks so much i really appreciate it or oh that's very sweet of you he just says oh i mean she is making a breakfast for her father on her own that wedding day fun. there's the posies here they are right where they belong oh oh i heard mother she's quite upset about the trellis but it's my wedding and i'm not upset 
trouble is, your mother's always been disappointed she didn't marry a handyman. I've made a good enough living. But I never seem to be able to fix anything around here. Your mother's never forgiven me for not being the combination carpenter, plumber, gardener she thought I was. But I'm, I'm not forgiving you for being a rude and insensitive patriarch. Your mother loves you very much, Daddy. She loves me. But there's always been a big gap of understanding between us, even after all these years. Unbelievable. She's making her father something breakfast on her old, own wedding day. Something new. A few hours from now, I'll have a new name. A new name? Like in the temple, a new name? So. Thomas Lawrence Bird. Oh. oh okay, not that kind of a new name, I guess. Tom will be so happy. I won't expect you to be anything but your own sweet self. We'll share every thought. We'll sit by the fire and maybe you'll read poetry. Dinner by candlelight. We'll take long walks and you'll tell me I'm beautiful. Yikes! Uh, fantasy here. Is, wow! That's, uh, that's, that's some fantasy. Okay, so we get our first look here at uh, character, which is Bryce Chamberlain. Now, he has been associated with... A lot of Mormon films over the years. He was in known for Man's Search for Happiness in 1964. He also played the voice of Jehovah in the 1969 Mormon and Temple Endowment film. And he was in a bunch of 80, 85 total films. He's, he's, he's very prolific when it comes to uh, Mormon cinema. Hi. Oh, no. You're not supposed to see me. I'm probably afraid you'll change your mind. Not a chance. What a wet blanket. Dad is... <laughs> How rude of the dad. You probably changed your mind. It doesn't seem like he's joking. Give me a break, dad. Oh, boy. Food. Fix breakfast, honey, while I turn into a bride. Finish scrambling the eggs there. If daddy doesn't get fed soon, he gets ugly. And everyone says I take after her. Uh, fix a couple for yourself, Tom. Thanks, I will. Well, gee, thanks. None of those last-minute jitters for me. I know what I'm doing fantasy was way out on right field let's his uh tom's fantasy for his upcoming marriage it'll be a good marriage we'll uh -huh. understand each other okay i can picture donna in front of the fire darning my socks what she'll learn to broil steaks rare just the way i like them and make gravy without lumps uh. push the basket through the supermarket without breaking the budget um on the morning of my marriage i was thinking about uh, subjects other than uh, darning of the socks the dude is fantasizing about his wife to be making gravy without lumps. Uh, let me tell you that that does that does not track with my honeymoon fantasies. Um, you know uh, that's all I can tell you. Basically, Tom's fantasy is that his wife is going to be like the mom bot from the Austin Powers series. You're a lucky guy, Tom. <laughs> I, I, I guess you're getting married today. Okay, so has the marriage taken place so far? Is this the reception, right? So we already had the wedding. Is that right? I'm starting to get a weird feeling that these guys are not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that has me greatly concerned. I mean, did we miss the wedding? Or it just happened off camera? I guess the wedding happened off camera, right? My spider senses are tingling. Are these guys Latter-day Saints or what? Now, if these guys are Latter-day Saints, look at the people, look at all of these uh, and, and women in, the, in this setting. Not one of them has any porn shoulders. You cannot tell me that this is not an LDS community when we are in the summertime, it's in Provo, and there's not one person who's showing any shoulders. She has a very modest temple wedding uh, uh, outfit, a gown. Fools never earn, never learn. What do you mean? Marriage is, is ordained by God. I don't understand. 
Marriage is necessary for exaltation. How are you going to write Fools Never Learn? Only the inside of a BYU motion picture studio set. I can tell these from a, a mile away. I think everything's under control. Oh, you can put guest towels in the bathroom. Okay. Hey, what do you want me to do with these? I just washed them. They were hanging in the bathroom. Oh, honey. Well, what's the matter with that? They're only stockings. I know, but with Mom and Dad coming... I'm going to move them before they got here. Besides, haven't they ever seen stockings? Not in my bathroom. Well, this happens to be my bathroom, too. My mother wouldn't be caught dead with underwear hanging in her bathroom. Well, my mother isn't ashamed of clean laundry. Look, I'll hang them up in your closet until they've gone. Yeah, give them to me. Well, now, listen. Oh, it's I not give them to me. Oh, look. You're being ridiculous. Who's being ridiculous? Oh, this is silly. Some... It seemingly erupted from nowhere, right? I mean, you've gotten married in the temple. I don't, I don't know if they did, but in the fight that she said that she was going to move them anyway, she was planning on moving the. Uh, he gets mad anyway. Parents, they just barge in without knocking. What? Look, they didn't even knock. Please, 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 just barge in. Gonna... Hi, Hi, folks. Come on in. Hi. So this is his parents. We already met her parents. Hello, mother. <laughs> Let me go check on the road. Sit down, won't you? Uh, yeah, come on. She calls him Father Bird? That's an odd way of talking about your father-in-law. Father Bird? That fight seemed to have uh, blown over pretty fast. Oh, honey, look. <laughs> Our first quarrel. Let's hope they always end like this seems to have erupted from almost nothing and from nowhere and it seems to have resolved uh, quickly should have gotten married in the temple that's all i can say because i'm starting to get the feeling that maybe they didn't yes i had to slow slow down no wonder they're so sexually frustrated by the way looking forward into the future we're seeing all of these shoes and this is supposed to be pa uh, showing the passage of time here now the shoes are showing that the family has gotten bigger over time we're maybe like four or five years into the future <laughs> He's kind of cute, isn't he? They all are. Holy cow. Oh, time out. Somebody got busy. What are you doing now? This is down here where you belong. I like, how Tom, I like how Tom here, he is helping out with the tuck-ins. You know what I mean? How many kids are we talking about here? This is a lot of kids. I have a little bit too many kids there if you need name tags for all of them. And they're all in one room? So we've got four kids. We got four kids in this. There are four kids already. They look like they're under the age of five. So we have four kids under the age of five. Are you crazy? I'd rather spend time in a Guantanamo Bay cell. Thank heaven for You know, in one room. I, I really think that the problem here um, with this couple is that the home is dedicated by the holy priesthood, and they need some pics on the temples on the walls at a minimum. But uh, what they say to the kid. What he says. Good night, Tiger. Said your prayers? Yes, Daddy. Said your prayers. You're the head of the home, Tom. You're supposed to be leading him in prayer. But at least we find out here that they're not godless atheists. Hey, that's important to me. Thank heaven for bedtime. Thank heaven? What about thanking God? What is going on in this film? Hey, now, this is where I really... Is this a beer? I'm knocking one back here? Is that a beer? Seriously, by the way, this does look like BYU on campus married housing. And if that's the case, a beer is not allowed. Have you I can't ever tell if that's a beer or not. Incompatible lovebirds. Maybe. Incompatible lovebirds. Uh, what could possibly be the metaphor that we're talking about here? Love is for the birds. The birds started fighting during their first fight. Incompatible love. Are, are you sensing any parable at all? They're both girls. Not what the man at the pet shop told me. I hope that's a root beer, Tom. Okay, the kids are in bed. My goodness, that is good. Let's have some relaxing time now. When you have four kids under the age of five, tuck in time is very important. Ugh! Just when I thought that Tom was a stickler about cleanliness. The boys really need a playroom. Some place they can keep all these toys. Room. They need at least two additional rooms for all of these kids. I don't know how kids can make such a mess. I'm so embarrassed when anyone comes. Hello, Tom. Oh, what's the use? Isn't there any more to our marriage than this? Betty wouldn't notice if I grew a daisy on the end of my nose. The kids get more attention than I do. 
peck on the cheek in the morning, and one when he gets home. Maybe if I were four years old. Tom? Tom? Hello? What's the idea? I'm just a little girl, and I want my daddy. Daddy, she's acting like a little girl? What kind of fetishes is Tom into, man? These guys are into some kinky, kinky stuff. I didn't see that one coming. For Pete's sakes, Donna, have you flipped or something? Not yet, but I think that's a wonderful idea. Now what have I done? Get a clue, Tom. Tom is clueless. Beautiful scoring in this uh, movie, by the way. Very beautiful. Same old thing day after day. I need some adult conversation. I need Tom. We used to talk to each other. Of course, these days, my conversation is limited to the price of baby food or Ricky's new tooth. But I don't think this ever would have happened if they had just held family home evening like they were supposed to. And had family prayers and scripture study and family home evening. They didn't do any of that. I'll just have to try harder. If he'd only just... Tell me what I do wrong instead of exploding like that. Let's see. Her birthday is just before Christmas. Our anniversary is in June. It can't be that. Did I tell her I enjoyed the meatloaf? I didn't make a crack about her mother. Dude. Dude. Yeah. I could have helped her pick up this mess. The spirit finally whispered the truth to Tom. With your children. Yeah, that's true. When I you have four kids under five, adult conversation time is extremely important. Well, you know how it is when you have four children. And mine just got over the measles. <laughs> what year are we anyway? So I looked this up. Uh, the measles vaccine was developed in 1963. This film was shot in 1965. Before it became available, nearly all of the children got measles by the time they were the age of 15 uh, years old. It's estimated that three or four million people in the United States were infected every single year, uh, but only maybe four or five hundred of them died. So the vaccine's been around for a little while. And because we don't get out very often, this is a real treat. I know just what you mean, Donna. Excuse me. Excuse me. Not to find anybody, but look at Donna's back here. Okay. It's been at least four years since the wedding, and the birds still haven't gotten married in the temple. Brother and sister bird, it's high time to make an appointment with the bishop, guys. That's all it took. So you see what that does? That puts a six points up. I see we're amalgamated iron rows two points today. That was a surprise, wasn't it? I mean, when you consider how weak the stock market's been generally, and that's a new Donna. one. Uh, what do you think will be the trend for the next three months? Donna, we were talking about football. Oh. Well, why don't we dance? A little while. Come on, honey. Well, Gail's starting to serve. Why don't you see if you can help her? Here, she's a beautiful and a smart lady. She knows her stocks. She just needs some adult conversation, which is totally understandable. And, and what does Tom want his wife to do here? He wants his wife to get back in the kitchen. Smooth move, Tom. Right. Nothing like an evening away from the kids to bring two people together. She's very sarcastic. I guess that's supposed to be sarcastic. Why can't yeah. she come out and say what she means? <laughs> so then what? Well, there we were ahead by six points. I don't know why you brought me. I might as well have stayed home and patched overalls. Have a good time? Marvelous. Corrupt communication. It turns out the sarcasm is a form of corrupt communication. So getting to know people in my new area helped me really realize that sarcasm was what uh, is a part of what the Apostle Paul calls corrupt communication. So some repenting to do here. Well, by your enthusiasm. Well, what can you expect? Take me to a party, dump me in a corner, and then I'm supposed to assure you that I've had a lovely evening. I thought you liked this crowd. Listen, I can visit with Gail and Barbara anytime I want to. Tonight, I wanted to be with you. So you're with me, and all you can do is gripe. Put yourself in my place, Tom. You'd be resentful, too. This is ridiculous. Put myself in your place. 
some serious marital counseling, I would recommend uh, highly trained bishops or maybe LDS Family Services. Try it sometime. Put myself in your place? Okay, I can try. Let's see. If that had been me trying to get your attention earlier tonight. Tom, it's good to see you circulating again. You haven't been out in weeks. Yeah, with the boss away, it's a real hassle down at the office. This is quite a treat. Excuse me. Switching roles here. <laughs> so uh, let's see how this uh, switching of the roles goes. Just get out. You just mix it in. It's amazing what you can do with mixes, isn't it? Did you know that you can get a shortcake mix complete with dehydrated strawberries? I mean, all you do is soak it in water for an hour. Tom, then... we were talking about gardening. The gender roles here are firmly established. This is 1965. The men, when they're talking, they're talking about football. The women, when they're conversing, they're talking about gardening. And I guess the kids are back home with the babysitter talking about Pokemon. Oh, well, come on, let's dance, Donna. Oh, why don't you go help Roy set up the chairs for dinner? Feeling here, Tom, he shot, probably should have worked a lot harder on his uh, mission. You know, if he had, then maybe things would have been a little bit better for him. Yes, I didn't make her feel very wanted. <laughs> Maybe I should try to put myself in her place more often. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's going for it. Hey, oh, he uh, kind of kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, Donald Trump and Melania Trump here. You know, he's going for it. And uh, 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 no, no, not going to happen. Why would Denied. you talk to me? Why won't he listen to me? Why won't she talk to me? She's been talking nonstop in the car. You haven't heard what she's had to say. Okay, this is okay. It is about time that this couple got some religion. We are back in the right place. You need to be talking to the bishop afterwards. Get those temple recommends going. Get this. We, we got to save this marriage. And by wait a minute, by the way, is this a uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints congregation? This scene is our best scene as to clue in as to whether this couple is LDS. But are there enough clues for us I'm to so figure true. out? Let's listen. We could live without war, crime, divorce. Yes, even without preaching, if we just live the golden rule. If we simply did unto others. And if we respected others as individual human beings, as men and women. Now look around you, even in your own homes, among those whom you love the most. How often do you give love and understanding? What's happened to us? He makes it sound so simple. I guess it would solve a lot of problems, even ours. Donna and I, we've grown stale. Where did it start? We were so happy at first, and then just gradually we forgot how to live together, and how to share. Donna's mired in house and kids, and nothing else seems to get through to her. Of course, maybe I've been the same way, wrapped in my own interests. We exclude each other. We need better communication with one another. And to practice in our daily lives those small common courtesies which will bring happiness. Now in this crowded world, man is fundamentally alone. It's possible for him to travel and to telephone great distances, even to send messages via satellites. But how often can man talk to man and be heard with understanding? Or a woman talk to man. If Tom would look at me just once and know that I exist, as me, Donna, his wife, to love and cherish. I've been shoved into the background of his life, and occasionally when he half remembers, he feels guilty and makes some apologetic little gesture like our date last night. I guess I should be grateful for small favors. Well, maybe that's not such a bad idea. If I could appreciate him for what he is instead of what I'd like him to be. I might be a lot happier. He has his problems, I guess. And maybe I'm not taking a good look at him either. 
this is the most important scene in the movie. I know some people disagree, but I need to know if these guys are Mormons or not. This is extremely important to me. Okay, I can put the clues together as to whether this is an LDS sacrament meeting. First of all, I always look. There's no porn shoulders anywhere in this. Uh, every single woman has her shoulders covered. Okay, that's step number one. Now, step number two, you'd look at the cinder block walls on the side of the building. That's not very common in a lot of other meeting houses, but it's extremely common in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Here, he does quote from a, uh, a passage in the Bible. He talks about the golden rule. This is from uh, Matthew chapter 7, the so-called Sermon on the Mount. He said, the golden rule is, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So, of course, uh, Latter-day Saints believe in the Bible. Now, this is another, but a very important thing is there are no children present in this sacrament meeting. That would be uh, uncommon, somewhat uncommon. However, think about this. Back to the primary week, it was not during the Sunday school during the three-hour block. So you would have less children in a sacrament meeting because they had their own service that was during the week. They're holding hands here in the last couple of seconds. Watch. Okay, so we seem to have been reconciled a little bit here. Let's get back to the question here of, is this an LDS sacrament meeting? If that's all that we had to go on, we wouldn't be able to definitively answer the question. However, you have come to the right place because they sang a hymn. Look at the hymn that they sang. Now we thank thee all our God. They actually sang the last three lines of this particular hymn, and this is an LDS hymn. The last three, they started singing right here, and guide us day and night and free us from all ills, protect us by his might. They started singing in the second verse right here, okay? Now, we can compare this LDS version of the hymn to more mainline Protestant because this is a, the text of this is from Martin Ringhurst. This was borrowed from the Protestant tradition, Tun Nundaket. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, okay? But if we look in the Wikipedia entry, typically this particular hymn has three verses. And in almost all the Protestant hymnals that I can find, it has three verses, but in the LDS uh, version, it only has two. If you look at the th second verse here, free us from all ills in this world and the next, and free us from the ills, protect us by his might. You notice that it changed. The normal wording here has been changed. It was supposed to be, and guide us when, uh, this is second verse, and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills. So this has been changed. The only thing that's the same is, and free us from all ills. That's stayed the same, but the other verses are different. Okay, that's because the LDS version of this hymn changes it to end after two verses, so they change the normal text. You are not going to see that if we look at another Protestant hymnal here. Once again, here we see, and guide us when perplexed and freed us from all ills of this world in the next. What I'm trying to tell you here is that the LDS hymn book is the only, has this particular text in it. Only one with this um, very, very, um, because it's ending after two verses. There is no way that they're at a universalist or Baptist church because there's no way that a Baptist church would be using an LDS text for a hymn. Okay, so there is no question about it. They are in an LDS sacrament meeting. There is just no doubt about it. So does that make them members of the church or not? Now, we can't say definitively that they're members of the church, but this is an LDS sacrament meeting. Of the hymn was uh, organ when it is playing. It is playing in the key of F major which would technically be the wrong key from the current setting of the hymnal. The current setting of the hymnal is in E-flat major. Now, I, but the hymnal that we have now was printed in 1985. So I don't know what the key is of the hymnal that was printed before this. I, I wasn't able to find that. But even if it was in E-flat major, it's a simple setting in the organ to make it go from E-flat to F. So I do not think that that is a smoking gun. It can be easily done in an organ setting. So some of the inner voices that the organ is playing of the, uh, the tenor and the alto parts, they do not match the 1985 hymn setting. But again, I couldn't find it to match the hymnal that was uh, extant in 1965. There is no way that they're not at an LDS sacrament meeting. So that man that we saw is a bishop. Okay, so these guys are members of the church. I know that that may be a small detail for some of you, but that's really, really important to me, okay? Now, I like here that Tom is uh, helping in the preparation of the food. And by the way, I, it appears that it has been another couple of years, maybe, by the way, uh, because the children um, are a little bit older. It looks like maybe the, the, that kid there, he looks like he's maybe seven, eight years old. So it's been another couple of years, by the way. Tommy, I told you to put that hose down. Okay, so the, the broken dish here. 
So now we have kind of like the Spider-Man dilemma. Do I save the people in the in the bus who are falling or do I save Mary Jane? And let me tell you something that but that dish is going to still be there when you get back. So if you have to choose between helping the boys with the hose and helping with the dish, you go stop the boys with the hose because that can get out of hand in a hurry. Stop what you're doing and go outside. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But she doesn't do that. Don't worry about it. I can get you another bowl. You pick a bend down. Pick up the dish so your wife can go outside and stop what the penis that's happening in the backyard. Sheila, I'll tell you what, I get off work today at noon. Why don't we plan something? Just take the kids on a picnic. Oh, honey, I couldn't possibly. I have a million things to do. Well, I'll do them tomorrow. Look, today's our day. I'll see you at noon and you get the picnic ready. Oh, she. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, dear. What could be here? What could the metaphor be? Um, Donna, she sure has her hair and curlers a lot. Is it me, or does she have them, uh, her hair and curlers a lot? And all of these kids are young boys. That is, that is unlucky. Yuck. This is the second time we've seen this in this film of the two boys that are outside playing either with the hose or in the sandbox. And let me tell you from somebody who's had a, a few children myself, you, you, just, you just can't do that. Uh, I know you can't watch them every minute of every day, but um, they can't be out there on their own. Tommy, watch the boys and see if they don't fall in the water. This was a wonderful idea. I do say so myself. Well, next time you decide to go on a picnic, give me a little more notice, please, or else make your own sandwiches. Hmm. That's sad. Oh, Tom, I didn't mean that. It's wonderful to have an afternoon with you. What's wrong with us? Maybe it's the lack of priesthood in the home, the lack of a temple wedding, you know, shut, the lack of temple recommends, the lack of family home evening. I, I guess I, I don't need to go on, but yeah, there's, there's a lot wrong with this family. We don't have that spark anymore. Why not? Who knows? I wouldn't want to be married to anyone else. Neither would I. Then what is it? We've just sort of taken each other for granted, I guess. There's been a foul up in our communication system. Something like that. Oh, I mean it. Trouble with most marriages is people can't or won't talk to each other. Well, I've always been willing to talk to you. I'm not talking about you and me right now. I'm talking about marriage in general. Well, you can't communicate with someone who won't listen. Or with someone who won't try to understand. Are you blaming me for that, too? Is that what I said? Why can't you hear what I say instead of what you think I say? Just conditioning, I guess. It's so seldom I have an audience with you. Well, go ahead and talk while you've got the chance. This is heartbreaking. Talk, I'm listening. Uh, he's not comforting her at all. Well, for Pete's you... sakes, now what? You Comfort can't... her, Tom. Hey, Donna, I'm receptive now. Turn it on, I'll listen this afternoon. It's your big opportunity. I'll be understanding for an hour. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Well, that's how you made me feel. You're giving me a slice of your valuable time. You're throwing me a crumb that's supposed to keep me from starving to death. Ouch. Donna, just what do you expect of me? Remember your ceiling vows in the temple, Tom? Uh, I guess not. To expect nothing. Why Ouch. are you always so sarcastic? It makes arguing with you impossible. We shouldn't argue in the first place. We should discuss. All right, let's back up. And I promise no sarcasm. All right, tell me. What did you expect of me when we were married? Well, I thought we'd have a wonderful marriage. I saw you as sort of a Robert Browning. Browning, as I had to look him up. He's an English poet and playwright who wrote dramatic monologues to the Victorian poets. He was noted for irony. No wonder she likes him so much. She's a pretty sarcastic individual. He, that seems to go pretty well with this couple. Social commentary. Um, and some of his long poems were acclaimed, but his reputation dwindled over time. He was born in 1812. And he died in 1888 and patient, overcoming my fears and uncertainty, and loving with the same intensity I would love. I guess I'd take after Mother. She expected my father to conform to what she wanted him to be. Now Donna's parents, we met them in the opening scene. They are, they're, obviously their relationship is dysfunctional. They are a very messed up uh, couple, and their toxic relationship seems to be affecting Donna and her ability to properly interact with Tom. 
I guess I just married a man after all. How about you? Did you do some daydreaming, too? Well, it never occurred to me that you would have anything to do or would ever want to do anything besides provide me with every comfort. What? I thought I'd be the center of your life. I expected you to be a marvelous cook, efficient mother and housekeeper, and, of course, stay as young and lovely as you were the day I married you. Donna's expectations of Tom, I think, are pretty reasonable. Tom's expectations of Donna are wildly unrealistic. I mean, it has been at least five years since they got married, maybe as much as seven or eight. And they, she's had four four kids, and she's still a size two. Okay, so give me a, give her a break here. I mean, both of these guys have very strange parents, and, and Tom's expectations are nuts. It's funny how in marriage your realizations don't always measure up to your expectations. Mom devoted her life to Dad and his comfort. Nothing else mattered. I guess I just took it for granted that was the wife's role. Why haven't you ever told me this before? They have really, really odd parents. I don't know. Pride, I guess. Or hurt feelings or being embarrassed. A lot of things prevent two people from confiding in each other. You don't want to listen, for instance. These kids again. These kids look like they're being raised by wolves. There's a stream that's nearby, and you've got a young it. You got a young boy and a couple of young boys who are playing right near the stream. Casting. Or you hide behind the sports page. You lock yourself in the bedroom. We're two different people, Donna. We've got to learn to understand and respect the differences in each other. We've, we've got to grow up. And I guess I've got to see you as you are, not as I wanted you to be. It never occurred to me that you might have expected something impossible of me and that you might have been disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Well, you compromised. I don't think I could stand living with a perfect wife. I couldn't bear a Robert Browning. A husband is a lot more useful. What is my purpose? <laughs> In your life, I mean. Well, practically speaking, you pay the bills and carry out the garbage and shovel the snow. But more important, you provide love and security. He stood. I think of all those little intimate family moments. The look we give each other when Tommy says his prayers or Jeff learns a new word. Without you, none of those things would seem quite so wonderful. I know what you mean. This boy would have escaped that basket about 10 seconds after oh, he was put here. into it. Right. The scene here. Basically, she says she expected her husband to be attentive and thoughtful. Tom says that he expected Donna to literally be his mindless, eternally hot slave with absolutely no thought for herself their lives. And then they agree that they've both been unfair, as if their expectations were, were, were equal in any possible way. And finally, Tom is at home helping to clean up. It's about time. Tom, you have a vegetable for the baby, will you please? Mm -hmm. Hi, Jeff. Did you have a good nap out in the car? The kid, the kid is taking a nap out in the car. You can get arrested for that, Tom. Hey, your boots untied. Tom, I asked you to heat up a vegetable for the baby. Sidetrack. I'll do it in a minute. Oh, never mind. It's easier to do it myself. And these guys get angry at the drop of a hat. A lot of good all that communicating does. We both fall back into the same old pattern. Understanding ought to be a minute by minute affair, not something you save up for an afternoon off. Well, Donna, you just undid all that understanding you were building out there today. <laughs> Oh, Tom. Tom, let's not lose each other all the time. Lose each other? We're just beginning to find each other. <sighs> the birds. Look, Mother and Daddy, the birds are loving each other. Yay! Oh, wow. So 
Well, there's no closing credits. Our little monologues in this film, they're like straight out of the uh, airplane. They're like the airplane monologues. They're kind of crazy. So my question for you is, is this like a romantic comedy or a romantic drama? What's, what's happening here? The, 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 the conclusion that I draw from the film is that the birds, they have dramatically different and uh, somewhat wildly unrealistic ideas of what marriage would be like. This film, of course, perpetuates 1960s style stereotypes. And finally, the position of having no religion in a BYU produced film acting for me. And, you know, I'm obsessed about whether these guys are Latter-day Saints or not. The question is not definitively answered. We know for a fact that they attend LDS uh, services. Look like the church plays much of a role in their lives. And maybe that's the problem all along. Now, our next review here, uh, Johnny Lingo, the 1969 mega classic. Thanks so much for joining me to review love is for the birds please like subscribe and leave a comment or you can send me an email to mormonmoviereviews at gmail.com and join us next time as we review johnny lingo uh in the mormon movie reviews where lds movie lovers belong so long